Hello, uh, my name is Saurabh and I'll be your tutor for GMAT which is uh, one of the important subjects for NTSC National Talent Search Examination. Today uh, I'll start with a brief introduction to GMAT or General Mental Ability Test. General Mental Ability Test is one half of National Talent Search Examination in which you will be given 90 minutes to solve 100 questions which will be roughly from 30 different patterns which have occurred previously in these papers. You cannot really say that the questions will be of these set patterns, but you can also expect some new type of questions every year. So to prepare for GMAT, you have to go through several different methods. One of the most important way to prepare for GMAT is to solve the question banks so that you have some idea about how to tackle the problems when you see them in examination. You have to be more smart than intelligent to solve GMAT paper. In the general mental ability, you will come across different kinds of questions which test your knowledge as well as your thinking as well as your attitude. The most important way to solve these questions is to directly tackle the question. But there is another shortcut or in case if you are not able to solve the question in given time, then you can always go by the options. In NTSC, you will always come across four or five options for every question and one of these options will be the correct answer. So when you have to solve a question in 54 seconds and you do not have idea about how to solve the questions, you would probably get some idea by looking at the options. So before going for GMAT, I would rather say get used to solving questions. Another way for preparing GMAT is you have to solve lots of puzzles. Puzzles like Sudoku, like crosswords, like puzzles related to chess and there are various other puzzles by solving which you can prepare for GMAT. Why I say puzzles are important? For two main reasons. They help you think better and they enhance your parallel thinking abilities. Now parallel thinking is basically thinking about a problem from various perspectives or various directions. So when you are thinking about a problem from various directions, you will probably end up hitting the right answer from the right perspective. So this is some basic introduction for GMAT which will come in handy when you prepare for GMAT and actually sit down and solve that paper of 100 questions in 90 minutes. So now we'll start with the first chapter which is called Dancing Digits. Now if you have all got this book Pradnya Bodh part 4, this is the first preparatory book of GMAT and in this particular book you will come across many patterns and we'll start with the first pattern which is Dancing Digits or in Marathi Layabaddha Ankarachana. Now today, I'll first briefly introduce the type and then we will go on to solve some of the problems from Padnya Bodh. Now this topic is more intuitive than any other topic in overall GMAT course. Why I say this is intuitive? Because you have to look at the pattern. For example, let's take the first example. Now you have to see this particular pattern and you have to think of fill in the blanks using only 0 and 1 that will fit this particular pattern so that it makes a meaningful sequence or meaningful series. For example, if I fill 0 in both of these blanks, so I will come across a pattern which is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Now this definitely is not a meaningful sequence from the perspective of GMAT. Why? Because this is not symmetric. Now let's say I fill in both the blanks with 1. So I'll come across 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now is this a meaningful sequence? Yes. It's a perfect sequence. You can split the sequence over here and you can see that the two parts of the sequence match each other. So basically now by hit and trial we have come across an answer which fits this particular example. Go for the second example. Now the first example I would say was simpler. Why simpler? Because it was just 8 digits and out of which 2 were omitted. Now if you look at the second one, it is little more elaborate. And this is something which you will have to tackle at the actual GMAT paper. Now just by looking at this particular thing, you probably would, would not have some kind of hint or intuition about what the answer would be. So basically, if you have learned what is alliteration in English, it's like repeating a word like rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. Now in this particular word, 
you're playing with words or playing with alphabets which repeat themselves. In case of dancing digits, it's something similar. Instead of alphabets, you have digits which repeat themselves. So let's say if we take this particular example and now we have to fill in the blanks. So the easiest way to do is to go through the options. Once you go through the options, now this one is question 6 from your pattern 1. Now if you go through all the options which are given for question 6, you will probably come across one answer which fits this particular question correctly. Now this is a shortcut method to solve this thing. How do you prepare for this kind of questions or for dancing digit questions? For dancing digits and dancing alphabets which will follow in the second chapter, I said earlier that this is more intuitive than anything else. So basically you have to go through the options and I would always say that going through the option helps you the most because you have to solve this kind of question in nothing less than 54 seconds. Always remember, this is your golden number. This is what you will get to solve one question. And you have to solve 100 questions in 90 minutes. So you have to be fast. So I would rather say, go through the options, check which option fits the series perfectly and which gives you a good and correct and meaningful sequence like the first one. So going through the answer of this one, if you make it 110011, 110011. So this makes a meaningful sequence. So the option which says 1101 is your correct answer. So basically option C from question 6 is your correct answer. Now we will start with a couple of sample questions. The first question which I have chosen is question 19 from your question bank, Pradnya Bodh 4. Now this pattern if you look, it's comparatively simpler and in this particular pattern now you have to come up with an answer which makes it a complete series. Now I would still say that this particular pattern is easy to solve because this particular pattern has two complete series or two complete sequences of a series and that's what I say is easy because we will see in question 25 that this is not the case. In question 19, so now you have to try and fill different zeros and ones here so that you come up with the right answer. So if you take a moment and try to solve it, then you will come across an answer which is 011001. 011001. So basically, 0011 is your answer, which is option A from question bank. Now we will move on to a little more difficult question. Now, if you count in this particular question, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So there are various possibilities that you can have two complete sequences of eight digits or you can have sequences which are completed twice and left incompleted afterwards. So that's why this particular question is little more difficult to solve than previous question. Now if you take a moment and try to see what fits into the answer, you will come across an answer from the options which says 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So basically in this particular question, you will come across once, twice and left incompleted. So in this question, you will come across series which is completed twice and left incomplete in the third time. So that's why these kind of questions are little more difficult to solve than previous questions. So instead of just trying to guess the answer, I would rather say you can go for the options directly when you see such a long train of numbers and try to solve them once you have the options in your hand. 